Can these guys be stopped? Last weekend, we saw the boys from the Caucasus Mountains essentially perform a clean sweep at UFC 294 at their home court in Abu Dhabi. Of the seven Dagestani slash Chechen fighters who fought on the card, none of them lost with six of them winning and one of them getting a no contest. Which in Magomed Ankalaev's defense was bullshit. I do believe a language barrier stopped what was probably going to be an incredible fight between Magomed and Johnny Walker when Magomed landed an illegal knee on Johnny Walker and the doctor stepped in and stopped the fight. Anyways, of the six wins, four of them ended up being a finish with the crown jewel being Islam's beautifully placed head kick on Volk that literally bobbled his head and eventually led to the win. Another astounding fact is that the combined records of these guys is an unbelievable 116, 6, and 1, with that one being a draw from when Magomed fought Jan Blahovic. This means these guys win a whopping 94% of the time, and I think this is the first time we've truly seen one team slash region slash style really dominate modern mixed martial arts. So today the question is, who the hell can stop these guys? Today we're going to try to create the perfect game plan in order to truly stop this seemingly unstoppable style of fighting. But before we begin, a couple things to note. One, of course I am just generalizing these fighters as the same style, Sambo, but there are definitely differences between each individual fighter. For one, they're all built different, some big, some small, some average, some red haired with one eye. And speaking of the last one, Shara Magomedov isn't really a Sambo guy, he is a kickboxing guy, but I wanted to include him still in those statistics to show that that region is still producing some of the best mixed martial arts talent in the world, regardless of whether it's striking or wrestling. But going back to the rest of the pack who are primarily wrestlers and going back to their individual styles. So some of them, like in the case of Islam Makachev, are extremely great strikers that don't necessarily have to aggressively look for that takedown like most Sambo fighters and can win a fight completely standing up. But for the sake of the video, we're going to be categorizing all of these fighters under one style. Sambo, or more generally, the game plan to get on top or in a dominant position, ground and pound, and or get a submission off the top position. And two, yes, these guys have been beaten before. Obviously, they've won 94% of the time, meaning they've lost 6% of the time, but I don't think their style at a high level has really been completely countered and dominated throughout all three rounds or five rounds. Islam Makachev's only loss, for example, came early into his fight with a perfectly timed counter by Adriano Martins in the first round. And we're going to talk about this fight soon in more detail, but when Magomed Ankalaev fought Paul Craig, despite him dominating, he still got caught by seemingly a triangle out of nowhere, giving Magomed his first and only loss. And I could go on and on about each one of these guys' losses, but it really just boils down to this style has truly never been shut down at the highest level in my opinion, so let's make the perfect game plan to do so. Also, if you're wondering why they're so good, I made a video on the Dagestani and Chechen fighters and why these guys coming out of that region are so successful in mixed martial arts. So first off, let's talk about the elephant in the room, stopping the wrestling. Realistically, I'm not sure this could be done. We just saw Kamaru, a guy coming in with practically a 97% takedown defense get manhandled in the wrestling department from terrible shots from Hamzat. I don't know if anybody's talking about this, but Hamzat's first shot was from the moon and he still got a dominant position out of it. I know everyone's first answer to defeating this style is to have good takedown defense, but I honestly don't know if that's possible against these guys. But what if we just let them take us to the ground? Call me crazy. But instead of putting a bunch of time and effort into defending the takedown, why don't we just survive or even thrive when we get there? Volk showed in his first fight with Islam that through strength and a pit bull neck, a fighter can just prove difficult to submit or get into a ground and pound position. From here, Volk was comfortable and composed enough to get back up from these positions and bring the fight back to the feet, which I would assume would be pretty demoralizing for Islam or any one of these guys seeing their strongest asset be controlled. And let's talk about not only surviving from this position, but thriving from this position as well. Paul Craig, like I said before, was getting beat and dominated by Magomed and Goliath in typical Sambo fashion. But in a small window during this ground and pound sequence, Paul Craig pulled off an amazing triangle giving Magomed his first and only loss. And I know Dustin still lost, but everyone, including Habib, has talked about how tight that guillotine was when Habib took Dustin to the ground in front of his father. Obviously, there's a lot of things a jiu-jitsu practitioner can do off their back, and I think when these Sambo guys get comfortable on the top position, especially in the case of Paul Craig, 
in his fight against Magomed and Goliath, they are susceptible to these submissions on the bottom. Granted, these are very hard submissions to pull off when somebody's just beating you from the top, but there are those small windows of opportunity that this could happen. And I don't know what to call this part of the game plan, but basically these guys have trouble fighting off to the back foot, especially if someone is throwing shots down the middle and have incredible hand speed. We kind of saw this in parts of the Kamaru Usman versus Hamzat fight in that third round, where Kamaru was finding his shots down the middle and putting Hamzat on his back foot. Some argued he could have taken that round and even the entire fight because he kind of also did that in round two as well. But in any case, these straight punches down the middle and the confidence to move forward definitely was causing problems for Hamzat. But a perfect example of this is when Kai Kar France fought Askar Askarov and in the second round, Kai had the confidence to simply walk down Askarov with quick straight punches and force him to take the fight going backwards. Around one minute of this round, he puts on the pressure with straight punches and out of desperation, Askar shoots such an obvious takedown. Kai also does it again at the end of the round. Because Askar was defending strikes the whole time, I think the shot was way more obvious than if Askar was mixing up his shots with strikes. And shit, we almost saw this in the beginning of Connor versus Habib, when Connor immediately put the pressure on Habib and forced a bad shot and defended well until Habib did what Habib does. Also, it's definitely harder to corner someone to the cage and shoot your shot if you're the one getting cornered to the cage. DC in this fight also mentions that it's harder for a wrestler to shoot off their back foot. I don't know how true that is, striking is more my forte, and despite DC being one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, he is quick to say anything in the heat of a fight, like when he constantly says that every sub is tight, so I'll leave it to my wrestler friends. Kai did end up getting this fight in a very close decision with a very controversial third, so I wouldn't consider this dominating the style, but he definitely laid out the blueprint like this comment suggested. But whatever the case might be, it's pretty evident that volume punches down the middle seem to hinder these guys and is definitely something to add to the game plan. Whenever strikers, or really anyone for that matter, faces these guys, the threat of the takedown is so prioritized that I've found that the striking seems to slow down when the irony is if strikers move forward and put the pressure on, especially with those straight punches, I think these Sambo guys would have less opportunities to shoot, or at least it would be much more obvious when they want to. Speaking of striking, another thing these guys have trouble defending is leg kicks. We definitely saw this in the Magomed and Goliath Jan Blachowicz fight when Jan was landing crushing leg kicks on Magomed throughout this fight to the point where Magomed literally winced in pain and had to lift up his leg. And we saw this intermittently in the Justin Gaethje Habib fight as well. And in the words of Habib, he hit like truck, you know, like sometimes Habib would be quick enough to move his leg out of the way but jesus like magomed these guys just tank leg kicks especially in the gaichi fight where there was no crowd you can literally hear how devastating these kicks were my theory for why these guys don't check leg kicks that often is that sambo's striking isn't really leg kick heavy like say kickboxing or muay thai so they're just not as conditioned to defending leg kicks and yeah there is that argument that guys like jan blahovic or justin gaethje are some of the best leg kickers in the sport period so whether it was a sambo fighter or any fighter for that matter they would have trouble defending their leg kicks but i still think that leg kicks in mass are going to slow down these wrestlers so yeah this was my game plan pretty short because there's not a lot of holes to their game but I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on how we can defeat these Sambo guys because it does seem like they're going to be dominating for quite some time. Again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next week. Peace.